Our second lecture video on rotational motion is going to discuss angular displacement, angular velocity, and linear velocity. The angular displacement of an object is the angle through which any point on a rotating object moves through. In this picture, even though point A is closer to the center of the circle than point B, both points have the same angular displacement. All points on the same rotating object move through the same angle in a given amount of time. Each point also moves through the same angle in one revolution, which is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. However, if we are looking at linear displacement, which is the straight line distance each point moves through, the linear displacement of point B is going to be much greater because that point travels a larger straight line distance in one revolution. The linear displacement is dependent on how far from the radius of the rotating object each point is located. Next, we will discuss angular velocity. Angular velocity is simply the rate of angular displacement. We need to use angular velocity in cases where we are referring to a vector that includes or indicates a direction of rotation. If the direction of rotation is not important or not known, then you can use angular speed. The angular velocity omega is found by taking the number of revolutions divided by the time or by taking the angular displacement divided by the time. We can look at this as omega equals theta divided by t, where omega is the angular velocity in radians per second, omega is the angle in radians, and t is the time in seconds. Or we can say omega is the angular velocity in revolutions per minute, where theta is the angle in revolutions, and t is the time in minutes. Be sure you read what the problem is asking for and then give omega in those units. Earlier, I mentioned that linear displacement is dependent on the radius of the rotating object. When we look at the linear velocity by, of a point on the circle, we can find the linear velocity by taking omega, the angular speed, and multiplying it by r, the radius of the circle. It is important to note that when we use this equation, we need to make sure that omega, the angular velocity, is given in radians per second. This will give us a linear velocity of either feet per second if the radius is in feet, or meters per second if the radius is in meters. It is also worth mentioning that in this picture, the linear speed of point A is indicated by the small straight arrow by point A will be much less than the linear speed of point B, which is indicated by the longer straight arrow by point B, because the radius at A is much smaller than the radius at B. However, both points will have the same angular velocity as indicated by the curved arrow. Let's take a look at an angular speed and linear speed calculation. A tire with a radius of 3.25 feet turns at 1,250 revolutions per minute. Express the angular speed in radians per second. Then, find the angular displacement in 3.50 seconds. Last, find the linear speed of a point on the rim of the tire. In the first part, we need to express the angular speed in radians per second. The reason we need the angular speed in radians per second is so that we can use the equation linear velocity equals angular speed times the radius, since the angular speed must be in radians per second. We will first take the given angular speed, 1,250 revolutions, and write that as a fraction over one minute, since it turns at 1,250 revolutions per one minute. Then we will multiply by the conversion factor, that one minute equals 60 seconds, to convert the minutes to seconds, and then last, we will multiply by the conversion factor, that 2 pi radians is equal to 1 revolution, a conversion that we saw in the previous lecture video. This will cancel off the units of revolutions, so we are only left with radians per second. Multiplying, we see that angular speed is 105 radians per second. Now that we have the angular speed in radians per second, we can go ahead and find the angular displacement in 3.50 seconds. We will write down the information that we already know. We know the angular speed omega is 105 radians per second. We also know that the time the tire is turning is 3.50 seconds. We are trying to find the angular displacement theta. The basic equation we can use given the data we have is that omega is equal to theta divided by t. We need to rearrange this basic equation to form a working equation of theta equals omega times t. Next, we can substitute in our information. Theta equals 105 radians per second times 3.50 seconds. The units of seconds will cancel off, and we see that we are left with theta equaling 368 radians, which is our angular displacement. Last, we want to find the linear speed of a point on the rim of the tire. We will again write down the information we were given. We know from the first part that the angular speed is 105 radians per second. 
Remember, we need the angular speed to be in radians per second in order to find the linear speed. The radius of the tire is 3.25 feet. We are trying to find V, the linear velocity. The basic equation for linear velocity is that V equals omega times R. Since this is already written in terms of the linear speed, we can go ahead and substitute in our data. V equals 105 radians per second times 3.25 feet. This gives us a linear speed of 341 feet per second. This concludes our discussion on angular displacement, angular velocity, and linear velocity.